I love Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. It exceeded all of my expectations for it. It let us experience a journey that felt both familiar and fresh at the same time. But this video won't be a normal review of the game. I could sit here and spend an hour just talking about how amazing the combat and the minigames were, how the story was everything I hoped for, how well realized all the locations were, or how awful the performance mode looked. Instead, I want to dive deeper to what I think is the best part of the game, the characters, and why I think Final Fantasy VII Rebirth might be the best party-based RPG when it comes to handling those characters. Question. Does that make me a dumbass? As Rebirth mostly follows the events of the original game, the plot development during the game is minimal at best. What was maybe 10 to 20 hours in the original game is now up to 100 hours if you choose to do everything. But the game does not feel like it's 100 hours and that is because all of that extra time is spent on expanding the world and characters in meaningful ways. All of the characters find a place in the team and feel like they are all part of this journey with Cloud Unlike in the original where a lot of the party members didn't feel fully fleshed outside of their particular story arcs. Some of the characters are introduced in a different way from the original game, but those changes made the characters more likable for me and how they blended into the group felt more natural. You are still going to get those important and classic moments for Barrett in Corel or Red 13 in Cosmo Canyon for example, but those moments have now so much more weight as the characters have been active participants in the journey there. Not only do the characters shine in the main story, but the character work is also attached to the game's mechanics and side activities. So let's look at the game's gameplay and mission structure and how it elevates the characters. Most of the game is designed around these big open world areas that always funnel into a more linear story focused sections. In the open world you are given free reigns to play with any party members you like. This allows players the freedom to play how they want to play and focus on playing as the characters they like the most. In most other games that would be it. You explore and fight with the party that you choose and the rest are just somewhere standing by. That often, at least for me, causes the issue where some party members don't feel like they are part of the group just because of my preference of who to play as. In Rebirth that is not a problem because you run around with the full group in the open world and in every fight you can see the non-active party members still fighting on the sidelines. They do not affect the combat itself that much but just seeing them there does so much for the feeling of the group dynamic. This also applies to the more linear sections but in those the game usually takes it a bit further and forces a specific party setup for you. And I love it. I love when party based RPGs force you to use all of your party members as it encourages you to learn all of their moveset and also gives time for bonding moments between characters. In a lot of RPGs it can easily feel that all of the characters bond together only through the protagonist and that's fine and all but seeing characters interact without the protagonist is very special as well. Early on in Rebirth we got a quite lengthy section with only Barrett and Red 13, which gave me time to appreciate their moveset as they normally were not in my active party, but also seeing them interact with each other was something I didn't knew I wanted. Just gonna throw there. Adding some flair to the character interactions are the synergy attacks in combat. Every character has a unique ability and animation with every other character. These are mostly played for cool and comedic effect and as an effective combat mechanic obviously, but it also elevates the feeling that all these characters have connections between each other and not just through cloud. The party members also get a time to shine during the mini games that the game is full of. I was very happy to see that even if you do play as Cloud for most of them, some of them also make you play as different characters either because of their skill set or just by the fun of it. 
And when it comes to additional interactions between Cloud and the party members, that is where the side quests come into play. Not only are the side quests mostly wonderful and engaging, each of them brings one party member to the spotlight alongside Cloud. They are always the driving force behind each quest by being the ones actually interacting with the guest giver so that Cloud can keep being a man of few words. A lot of the requests and stories also relate to the character's backstory in some way. For example, in the first region you go gather flowers with Aerith or helping a struggling bartender with Tifa. Pinch of salt. That'll give it the kick it needs. Trust me. I find Reaper's approach of weaving party members' personal stories into the main story and letting side quests expand on their personality much more interesting than the traditional route where every companion has their one side quest line, but all other side quests are only between the protagonist and the quest giver. Adding to their connection to Cloud, there are many optional dialogue scenes during the game as well. In these moments, you can actually pick different dialogue choices as Cloud, which can lead to different reactions from your party members. I've never been the biggest fan of dialogue choices in games where you can't actually change the story based on your choices, but Reaper doesn't use it too often to feel disconnected and responses to your choices can be very heartwarming and funny. I knew I could count on you. <laughs> Flattery will get you nowhere. Completing side quests, choosing correct answers during optional dialogue moments, and performing the so cool synergy attacks during combat raises your bond with the party members. This bond system is really only for choosing your companion for the famous date scene later in the game. I would have actually preferred if the bonds were a totally hidden mechanic, as I feel that seeing those your relationship with Tifa has deepened messages didn't really add anything to the moments. And lastly, I want to mention the music, which overall was fantastic, but very interesting when it comes to the characters. We all know that the main characters have their own musical themes, but what Reaper does exceptionally well is that the game has so many different versions of those themes to fit the location and the mood. I lost count how many versions of Tifa's theme or Aerith's theme I heard during the game. Sometimes those motifs are so well hidden in the composition that you gotta really listen to it to find it, and it makes certain scenes even more magical. All of this character building and interaction is what made Rebirth such a thrilling and emotional journey. I've never felt so connected to a group of characters while playing a video game, and that is saying something. I do recognize that some of that feeling is rooted in nostalgia and knowledge of the other Final Fantasy VII media, but I don't think it makes Reaper's achievements any less powerful. The game is designed in a way where you could play it without any pre-existing knowledge, but you get so much more out of it knowing Final Fantasy VII and its spin-offs. That is just the nature of what they are doing with this remake trilogy, and I cannot wait to see how they continue this magical experience in the third part. Thank you for watching and I hope you found the review interesting. I would love to hear your thoughts on Rebirth in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss my future videos. Thank you and have a great day.